classical Japanese literature is a corpus of texts. It's a body of texts from the very earliest written texts of the 8th century up until about the middle of the 19th century. It includes the genres of poetry, prose fiction, drama, and essays. We have a comprehensive program in Japanese. It extends from first year Japanese, konnichiwa, up until the PhD. And we've got everything in between, minor, BA major, master's degree, and of course, the highest degree, which is the doctorate. We cover it all. Classical Japanese is an integral part of our curriculum in Japanese language, literature, and culture. People aren't truly fluent unless they understand something about the classical language. And people aren't truly acquainted with Japan unless they know something about its deep and rich cultural history. I think in college education of Japanese, the most thing you get exposed to is like modern Japanese. Not every school will offer a class of classical Japanese, first of all. So it's a very precious chance. I find that in a lot of modern literature, there is this kind of lineage that gets traced from classical. And so even if you're only doing modern, I think it's really important to have some kind of knowledge of classical Japanese. What I like about classical Japanese literature is that uh, you know that uh, each word and uh, each word used in classical Japanese literature and also each event and each person, they have such a long history behind them. And uh, you can, as you look them up, you can have a better understanding about Japanese culture, its aesthetics and its connection to Chinese literature and culture, and also how it kind of connected to the modern Japanese society's culture and art as well. Another reason to study classical Japanese literature, I think, is it gives us insight into Japan, both present and past. Of course, before there was psychology, there was literature. And if you wanted to understand how people thought and felt, their desires, fears, fantasies, you had to turn to literature in order to figure those things out. We have historical texts and they're wonderful. And the historical archive in Japan is intact to a degree that just inspires envy in uh, European historians. But even that is highly uh, incomplete. So you read something that's been called the world's first novel, The Tale of Genji, and it's made up, but it's made up in such a realistic way and it has such great psychological insight that it gives you, I think, a pretty good idea of what it might have been to be an aristocratic person uh, at the imperial court around the year uh, 1000 or so. It's a recreation of the world. We feel at least we can reconstruct it, if not physically, but mentally, spiritually, and emotionally by reading this book. And I think that's amazing. When I came to the graduate program at Asian Languages and Literature, I originally focusing on modern Japanese literature, not classical Japanese literature. But after taking a couple of graduate seminars offered by Professor Paul Atkins, I was just fascinated like how he makes classical Japanese literature fun to study and how much depth it has in its language and aesthetics. I am Japanese and I grew up in Japan and I got my basic education in classical Japanese literature there as I grew up like at the middle school and high school but nobody told me like that classical Japanese is this fun and like how deep it is. I've always been really interested in language from the perspective of the works that come out of it and I've had a lot of exposure to current Japanese media and art but I haven't really engaged with a lot of the older work so this class was an opportunity for me to both sharpen my Japanese language skills as well as sort of engage with the Japanese classics on a deeper level. This knowledge of classical Japanese is useful for me particularly because I am a history major and will be going into a history field with a focus on East Asian history. And the ability to read classical Japanese texts is very useful for understanding the culture of the period as well as using it to find primary sources that I can use for research. I think classical Japanese literature is worth studying. First of all, it's just intrinsically fascinating. There's a depth and there's a profundity to classical literature, especially I focus on the medieval period, which is basically from say 1150 to 1600. And one of the key words for that is mujo or impermanence. This idea, and these people were living in a very chaotic and troubled time that nothing lasts forever, nothing is eternal. 
If we incorporate that understanding into our lives, we realize we have to live in the moment, we have to live in the present, not take anything for granted, not take anyone for granted. I think the uh, impact and the interest of classical Japanese literature is not limited only to it, it giving us understanding of Japan past, but the present as well. The past is never past, it's always present. We say that the past is a foreign country, and it might be. By studying it, we understand that these people were different from, but also very like ourselves. They had similar concerns. Their worries and their aspirations track up, not completely with ours, but I think it's close enough. Classical literature, I think, is what makes Japan, Japan.